author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and I'm here at the PNWA's Writer's Cottage in Gilman Village in Issaquah, Washington, with Kevin O'Brien, author of Unspeakable. Kevin, welcome to Author. It is great to be here, Bill. So, 14 books is a lot of stories, and you're doing one a year? Yes. Talk to me about that experience of starting book number 15, say. You, and you write about killers, and you write about similar ideas. You don't have a series in that traditional right. sense. Where do you go to start that story? To start another story? In my story? dark place. Do you? Yes. Is it really? I, no, well, it's, it's very funny because, you know, I'll start a new book and I'll think, oh, no, I did that already. I did that. <laughs> no. Oh, I killed them that way already, right. you know? And so it's always a big challenge to come up with a new idea. And, you know, thank God my agent works pretty closely with me. So does my editor. And they will come up with some ideas and I'll filter those. And so sometimes... Yeah. That's how I'll come up with a new idea. Um, other times, it's just a sort of sick inspiration. Every, everybody tells me, oh, I met you, and you seem like such a nice guy. Yeah. And how do you write <laughs> these really creepy things? And recently, well, it was about a few months back, Jenny Shortridge mm -hmm. uh, told me that her, uh, her, the person who does her hair <laughs> okay. also does chakra and oral readings. All right. Excellent. All right. All right. And so she said, you know, Kevin, would you be interested in a chakra reading? I'm like, oh, no, no, it's free. Okay, sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do it. So uh, the woman got me in her hairdressing chair or, you know, the barber chair type of thing, and she's waving her hands over my head and over my feet. And she said, you have cracks in your feet. And I was like, really? And she said, and you're letting somebody in. And she said, it's an evil little man that you're letting <laughs> into you, and you're working with him on something. And I said, did Jenny tell you I write thrillers? And she said, no. And I said, well, it's that evil little man working overtime that uh, helps me out, I guess. So, so an evil little man uh, is evil. <laughs> An evil little man. So my question to you is, why are you letting an evil little man into your life? Because he's making me money. What can but I tell you? But you must like him on some degree. I mean, I'm not you saying know, that you're, right. but there must be something about that that is interesting to oh, you. Oh, if he can deliver, you know, the, uh, the sort of the hair standing on the back of my neck, then I, uh, when I'm writing in the middle of the night, which I usually do, I'm a night owl. And so I'll, at 2 o'clock in the morning, if I can creep myself out while writing, I'll think, okay, you're that little man. at 2 in the morning? Oh, I was up till, God, I think 5 this morning. What? Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you write, in the middle of the night? It's mostly in the evening, and then when I've got deadline crunch, you know, or deadline hell, as I like to call it, I usually write all day and you know, go to bed at like 6 in the morning and then wow. get up at 9 or 10 and keep writing. So it's like, it's wow. like a term paper that's due. You know? Wow. Do you find that when you get into that mode of where you, it's, like, it's deadline hell, that the writing almost... It picks up a little bit. Somehow that oh, pressure you just summons it. something. Yes, yeah. it just totally picks up. It makes you stop thinking. Oh, when I have time, when I, when you know, when it's <laughs> like the the book isn't due for four months, it's like, oh, I wasn't inspired today. I wrote four paragraphs right. or four words, and you know, then I watched a movie, and then I went to on YouTube, and then I went, you know, then I did this, and you know, all the stuff that you can think of to stall and. Right. But when, I, I, when I'm under the gun, which I'm just starting to be under the gun, my book's due in about six weeks, uh, I, write, I write like the wind. When you're creating your villain, because you've always got to have a, a villain that we are frightened of and we want to see brought to justice <laughs> in the most lethal way possible, <laughs> how, what, what makes a good villain for you? Like, what, how do you know the difference between a, a, a mediocre villain what you think of is just like, yeah that'll work mm -hmm. and one that really i think you you've got to sort of there's got to be part of you that actually likes your villain yeah. or yeah. is sort of at least understands them really well i have had i've never i could be wrong but i've never done a book where the villain is actually doing something just for money i think that's the most boring uh, that would be awful. Yeah, it would be just dull. Who cares? So it's they've got to, you know, like so. One of my victim, one of my villains uh, in Make Them Cry, he was like, he wanted to build an altar of bones 
for you know so right. you, you know you think you know he's he was collecting body parts from people and making up but on you altars. have to so understand like, you know, why they want right, that. right You're like an actor you have to because you have to be to, an actor you have to believe that that's the right dive thing into that part yeah you and so there's a you do go that that little man takes me to a dark place and you know i'm able to get into that person's head and but they that, feel justified too the, the villain feels there's a there's a reason they're on a mission and that's what makes it much more interesting and one of the satisfying things it seems to me on a sort of psychological level to create these villains is that then they but then that idea of that sort of misguided idea of of how happiness is achieved perishes right it, you know that's the you know it, it all goes it, down it has to yes yeah. And they undo themselves in some way. And you have to see that happen, too. You have to get that satisfaction of seeing somebody either tell them off or to see everything just go down the drain that they right. believed in so that you can you know, feel that satisfaction. If you, if you don't have any... I, mean, I, I think that that is one of the basic things, uh, the satisfactions people get out of reading thrillers. I mean, somebody once asked me, you know, why do you write about these murders? And... And it, it's because in real life, we don't always have a great wrap up. We don't have, you know, justice isn't always served. In fiction, most of the time it is. And that makes it, you know, very satisfying that you can see justice served. And that's the other thing. It seems to me that, that you know, it's very easy just to get caught up in a bunch of ex scary, exciting things happening. But what is learned? Even in, a mo even in books about serial killers, that has to be an issue for the protagonist. What do they learn in that process by going through this experience? Oh, yeah. Well, I think that's all in their backstory, too. You need yeah. to kind What's of... Their... What is kind of resolved yeah. in their issue of, you know, the, the fact that they were trying to be independent or, and they really, they really needed somebody else or vice versa. They thought they, they needed somebody and they really didn't. They were able to have the strength. And they can learn these different things, you know, yeah. through their ordeal. And, you know, that's, that's always the lesson, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And your ordeal of writing a book it ends finally. You're, going into your, you're coming into your deadline hell. You'll finish mm -hmm. it. And then do you say to yourself, what the hell have I just done? Do you have any idea or do you, what do oh, you do mentally at that I'm point? Well, first of all, I'm convinced it's a piece of crap. This is now, it. I don't know if you can say crap on <laughs> yes, this. Yes, you can. Okay. Um, I'd even go worse than that. I always finish a book hating it. Okay. And then, I, you know, I've read it again and again and again. I, I'll sit outside, you know, on a park bench and just with a The stand, manuscript. With the manuscript and read it. It's it, Usually my deadline happens during the best of weather, you oh, know. Good. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, maybe at least I can take the book outside and read it. And I'm so tired of it by then and sort of like inundated and I'm convinced it's going to be the one that's going to put the nail on my it. coffin. Yeah, you At can't see At that point, you're just totally lost, aren't you? And you do, you kind of, I go through this whole, it's, it stinks, it's not bad, it stinks, oh, it, you know, it's got these really good points. No, it stinks. And then I, I finally, uh, it's usually the first review helps me out. And it's like, whether it's Amazon or RTW, thank God RTW, <laughs> uh, liked uh, Unspeakable, they, they loved it. So I was like, oh, great. You know that is a dang good book. Suddenly, I suddenly that little man has given me a really good twisted thriller. Now, if I recall correctly, you're you sort of you you were in a writing class. It was really how you got serious as a writer, right? Was, was with whom? Was it well with, I've, with uh, Zola Helen Ross? Zola, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So now here's what I want you to do. I want you to go back in time to young, starry-eyed <laughs> Kevin taking that class. Okay. What would you say to him now? That he need he doesn't know that he that he needs to learn. I would say just keep doing what you were doing. It's it was a really great experience. Um, one of the one of the coolest things about that class was reading, having my first one of my first short stories read, and then hearing everybody like murmur afterwards. And like I thought, they like it. They like you know the little Sally Field. They like yeah. me. They like me. And it was so so great that. You know, I, I thought I now I know I really want to be a writer, and I think it was it, it was I I think I would tell myself to keep going in the path that I was going and not to give up, to be persistent and um, and to to have a good balance between being confident and yet not being overly confident. Don't don't think that your stuff is just so terrific that it's going to mesmerize people. You always have to try a little harder to keep them entertained.